All right, welcome back to the Clara CFO Group YouTube channel. Today we've got a pretty practical set of information for you. We're gonna talk about how to optimize your invoicing process in QuickBooks Online. So if you're using QuickBooks Online and you're sending invoices out through their module, this is for you and you're gonna to wanna to pay attention. Really, we just wanna make sure that our invoicing and our AR processes are as smooth as possible because nobody wants to be trying to collect on invoices that are months overdue. And we wanna have, have good communication with our customers as well so that they know what's going on and that we're all on the same page and we don't have any kind of adversarial situation with them owing you money and you've done the work and it just, it creates a lot of challenges. So we want to have a smooth AR process. We wanna invoice quickly. We want to collect quickly. And really that helps you speed up your cash flow, which is only going to help you in the long run. So we're going to talk through a couple of things that is that are in QuickBooks Online specifically. So if you're using other systems, this this video is really meant for QuickBooks Online. I know a lot of you are using that. And we're going to talk through the setup of that and a couple key things and a couple new features as well that even I didn't fully know about or how to implement. So we're going to talk through that. And um, if this type of information is helpful to you as a small business owner, then please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and make sure you click the little bell too so that you're notified when new videos come out. All right, well, let's just get on over to QuickBooks. All right, so here we are in QuickBooks Online, and this is a sample company. So this is something that they provide so that we can test out the system and we can also look at data that doesn't, uh, we don't have to worry about infringing on anybody's privacy here. This is a sample company. So what I wanted to show you guys, when you go into, obviously if you've been using QuickBooks invoicing, you know that you can find it by going over here to going to the sales module and then invoices. And then specifically when you're in here, we'll be looking at we'll be looking at actual invoices. So if you click on one of the invoices, um, I wanted to point out some of the things that we can customize on this format. So here's an invoice that's already had a little bit of customization to it. So it does have this custom field here, and then it looks like uh, it has products and services that have been added, and they have a little discount percentage down here. Um, and you know, a message on the invoice that they'd like to put. So it looks like they've done a little bit of customizing of this and then their terms are set at net 30. But I wanna show you how you can change some of this and also a couple things that you can do to help your accounts receivable process run a little bit smoother and hopefully speed up cash flow because that's really what we wanna do. We wanna send out invoices and we wanna get paid as quickly as possible. So in order to do that, we go up to the gear icon up here, and then we're gonna get a, going to go into accounts and settings. And from accounts and settings, we're gonna go into the sales section. And it's giving me a little bit of an error right here. I think it's because this is a test, a test product and not actually the full live QuickBooks. So it's, it's noticing a little bit of an error, so just disregard that. So if you wanna just customize the way that your invoice looks, you want to put your logo on there or you want to change the address fields or you want to um, maybe create different templates or modify your templates, you're gonna do that by going here to customize the look and feel. And we're not gonna go into too much detail. I might do a separate video on how to customize this, but you are able to change the color scheme. You can get a little bit fancy with fonts, not too crazy, um, but you can also upload your logo. And then you can change the content inside your actual invoice here. And you can also create multiple templates, so that's kind of helpful if you have certain customers that like to see certain data on their invoices and then maybe, or maybe you provide two different services and you like to have those invoices show slightly different information, you can change the template um, depending on, and then you could, when you send out the invoice, you can select which template you want it to use. So that's kind of helpful. Uh, but like I said, we're not gonna go too much into detail here, but that is where you will find that customization. 
All right, one of the things that I definitely wanted to point out is that you can change these preferred invoice terms and you can also establish new ones. So we have talked about in the past that to speed up cash flow, you might want to consider your terms and whether or not it's working well for you and your business. If you were on net 60, but your customers could pay sooner, why are you on net 60? If they could pay on receipt, why are you on net 30? So it's a it's an interesting um, exercise to go through as you're thinking about your invoicing policies and you're thinking about how you want to set things up with your customers. Now, when you set up these, if you have contracts, you might need to make sure that you're not in any violation of an existing contract if you, you know, automatically change your invoicing terms. So be, be aware of that. But you are able to establish new terms in here so you can create a custom one. And then it's not giving you a lot of options here, but you can make it due in a fixed number of days or due by a certain day of the month. So let's say that you are a landlord and you wanna send your invoice out to your tenants. If that's the case, you can say it's due by the first of every month. All right, so that can be kind of helpful for you. Now, I'm a little disappointed that QuickBooks hasn't instituted a option to do a 210 net 30 or a 110 net 30 where you get a discount for paying within 10 days, but the whole amount is due in 30 days, which we've talked about in the cash flow video that we did. Um, maybe that's a good point of review for them and something to look forward to in the future. But if you did have those terms, you could still put it in here, but you would have to manually calculate the discount. So that's a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a bummer, I would have to say. Um, but you are able to put in custom terms. Like I've, I have, I've had a client that had 45 day, um, a net 45 in their contract. So they went ahead and put that in here and were able to easily select that when they invoice those customers. All right, the rest of this section is really just about the form of the actual invoice. So you can customize this, create custom fields, which is really helpful, and then determine whether you want that to be only available to you internally, or if you also want the customer to be able to see it on their invoice. And discounts and deposits, you have to enable those here. They don't automatically show up on the invoice form, so you have to actually turn the toggle on for those. That might be something that's interesting to you. I'm just gonna cancel out of that. And then we're gonna go down here to late fees. So this is actually a kind of new section for QuickBooks Online. And this is where you can charge your customer late fees if they have not paid their invoices. Um, so you can do it in a number of different ways. We can set it up so that it has a flat fee for charge per invoice per month or per day or you can do a percentage of the remaining balance. So let's say, I mean, it usually wouldn't be 50%. It might be 1% or half a percent or something like that. You could do once per invoice per month or per day. Okay, so this is an option to you and it can automatically charge it. And then it also has a grace period. So maybe you have a net 30 and you have it in your contract that there's a $50 late fee if they don't pay within 30 days. Um, but if you wanted to give a couple day grace period, there is the option for that, okay? Or even a 30 day grace period if you really wanted to. Um, that is helpful. And then this, this tells you where those items would be classified. Now, I would have to say, I think that this is a really fantastic feature. I would try to make sure that this is in all your contracts if you want to start using it, at least on a go forward basis, and you are able to customize it by customer once you turn this on. So you can go into the individual customer record and further customize this. Um, but what you don't wanna do is turn on late fees and not tell the customers because that will only create contention and it's good if you do decide to use this feature, you, you need to have some form of communication with your customers. And that's just really best practice. I mean, there's no rule around that, but you just don't want a little late fee and you making a little bit of money potentially make you lose a customer because somebody's really upset. So just be, be sensitive about implementing something like this and also make sure to keep up communication with your customers and clients. All right, but I do think it's something that could definitely be leveraged. And if it's in your contract saying that it's an automatic late fee, I think it kind of takes away that personal 
um, you are assessing it to them and it's in the contract, it's there, they sign the contract. It just makes it a lot easier to go ahead and enforce a policy like that if it is set up properly from the beginning and agreed upon from the beginning, okay? Um, so that is late fees, which could be helpful. Um, progress invoicing is interesting. This, I don't think necessarily speeds up cash flow in any ways, but if you create an estimate and then you start billing against that estimate, you will be able to track the progress. So if you are in a situation where you have a really hard time keeping track of where you are in a longer term contract and what you've actually billed and what's been paid, it might be good to keep, to use this progress invoicing feature because you might be able to track it more closely and make sure that there's no leaks, like you didn't miss an invoice or you didn't uh, fully bill out on a contract or over bill on a contract, which can, can put you in a sticky point too. So that's something to consider. I also like this automatic reminders. Again, anytime that we can help smooth out the accounts receivable process and make it easier for everybody, this is a good thing. So you can have this go ahead and send out emails automatically when something is late. And you can also customize this language. So if you want it to be a softer tone or if you want it to be a serious tone or if you want it to, however you want it to be, you can customize this language, which I think is really helpful and it can send it automatically, which also, again, helps streamline the process. You don't have to remember to go in there and remind somebody, it's just happening, and it makes everybody's lives a little bit easier. And remember that you can also see in QuickBooks Online, if you're emailing this out to a customer, you can see if they have viewed an invoice. It actually shows up in the detail and when it does that, that gives you an indication of, okay, they've seen it and they're just not paying it. Or if they've never seen it, they've never opened the email, that might be a time for a phone call to follow up and say, hey, you might not have seen our QuickBooks invoice that came through. It comes from this email address and you can follow up and have that conversation because sometimes emails will, things will go to junk mail or whatnot and people just won't see an invoice. So it's good to kind of have that indication too of whether or not they actually looked at the invoice. <laughs> Helps uh, give a little context to that conversation. All right, and then the last thing is that there's this option for online delivery. So I like to use the email function of QuickBooks Online, but you do have the option of whether or not you want it to just show the summary of the invoice or if you want it to show all the details. Sometimes that could be helpful if you know that the customer it just wants to look at it really quick and they're not gonna click in there and then view the PDF. They just wanna like see it and pay it quickly. You do have that option. So it's um it's something that you can just determine what, what is best for your customers and what, what makes the most sense, all right? What gives them the information they really wanna see? and what helps you get paid faster. All right, well, those are the settings I wanted to point out to you. I hope that's really helpful. And if there's another feature that you like to use to help streamline your accounting and your accounts receivable, I would love to hear about it. So please put it in the comments below. So I hope that video was super helpful and hopefully you learned a few things that you could implement in your invoicing process to make your AR smoother. We just remember, we're trying to speed up cash collections. That's only gonna be a good thing for your business and help you improve your overall operations. All right, well, thanks guys, appreciate it. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. All right, bye.